A China, um vírus misterioso surgiu na cidade de Wuhan. O vírus é uma variante do coronavírus, mas se sabe muito pouco sobre ele até agora. Bom dia, amigos do Brasil Export, conselheiros, patrocinadores. O Agora no Brasil, 9 horas da manhã, em Singapura, 20 horas. Quero inicialmente agradecer a presença do Mr. Bloch. Muito obrigado pela participação. Welcome to Brasil Export. Gostaria de agradecer também a presença aqui do Joel Júlio, gerente sênior para a América Latina da Interprens em Singapura. Muito obrigado, Joel, pela sua presença. Você é sempre um grande do Brasil de Esportes. No passado tivemos uma experiência incrível em Singapura e tenho certeza que a videoconferência de hoje irá mostrar um pouquinho daquilo que nós visitamos e acompanhamos. Então, mais uma vez, quero agradecer ao meu amigo, parceiro Angelino Caputo, diretor executivo da Abitra, nosso presidente do Brasil Hack Export. Angelino, hoje a moderação tenho certeza que estará em ótimas mãos e já passo a palavra para você para você iniciar os trabalhos. Mais uma vez, agradeço a presença de todos. Nossa! Saúde, Portela. Tudo bom para você? Bom, obrigado, Fabrício. É uma honra estar aqui conversando com o pessoal de Singapura, que foi a viagem onde a gente aprendeu mais nessa questão da tecnologia. Tanto que nós estamos tentando, neste momento, trazer parte desse modelo e implantar aqui na nossa linha de inovação para o setor portuário brasileiro. Né? Agradecer aí a mediação do Joel. É, já que aqui a gente fala de inovação, até aqui no nosso próprio seminário, hoje nós temos uma coisa diferente. Pela primeira vez, e testando esta ferramenta, está ocorrendo a, a tradução simultânea. Então, existe um ícone novo na tela, embaixo, é o penúltimo ícone da direita, quem tiver no notebook, não sei, na, no celular ou na, no tablet, como é que funciona. E ali é possível escolher o idioma, se quer ouvir em inglês ou se quer ouvir em português. O meu, por exemplo, está marcado aqui para português. Temos a participação da Patrícia, que é a nossa tradutora. Então, à medida que eu for falando em português, ela vai traduzindo em tempo real para aqueles que estiverem ouvindo em inglês e vice-versa. Quando eles falarem em inglês, ela vai traduzir para a gente no canal em português. É, alguém fez alguma pergunta? Né? É, agradecer, então, o Mr. Law, que é o diretor de assuntos portuários e logística da Enterprise Singapore. Muito obrigado pela presença, é uma honra estar conversando com o senhor. E vamos direto ao nosso tema. né? Nós estamos fortemente inspirados pelo que nós vimos na PSA, e no PIA 71, lá em Singapura. Então, hoje a gente vai compartilhar com o nosso público aqui um pouco dessa experiência, para que todos saibam como é um processo de inovação sistematizado. Não é uma, não é uma inovação é, eventual. Existe toda uma linha 
bem conhecida, um processo de inovação, e é isso que a gente viu lá em Singapura. Então, bom dia, Mr. Law. Queria que o senhor começasse fazendo uma Good breve morning. apresentação sua e sobre o papel do Enterprise Singapore neste processo. Só um segundo. Eu pediria a todos que deixassem os seus aparelhos aqui configurados para deixar com o microfone desligado. Em razão da tradução simultânea, eu preciso que todos deixem os microfones desligados, por gentileza. Mr. Law, it's your turn. Uh, could I have some help to bring up the slides? Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, uh, my our Brazilian friends and also Singaporean friends. Uh, uh, very happy uh, to be part of this uh, webinar today uh, to share about what uh, we are doing in Singapore regarding our innovation as well as our startup ecosystem. Uh, very happy to, to share with you and ha very happy to have a interaction with you after the presentation so I can also learn more about you and you can also learn more about what we are doing in Singapore. So really looking forward to that. Uh, next. Let me just give you a quick introduction about Enterprise Singapore. Uh, we are part of the Ministry of Trade and Industry, uh, which we look at uh, the whole economic development landscape in Singapore. Uh, the Ministry is in charge of many things including investments, trade, tourism, industry, research, technology, SMEs, startup and innovation. In particular, Enterprise Singapore, our mission is to help local, com local Singapore companies to build capabilities and to capture new opportunities across sectors and different markets as well as to be globally competitive. Next. More importantly, uh, we are committed uh, to work with our partners uh, to build capabilities, to innovate, as well as to internationalize. We also support the growth of Singapore as a hub for global trading and startups. We are also the national standards and accreditation body so that we continue to build trust in Singapore's products and services through quality and standards. So as you can see, Enterprise Singapore covers many are different areas of economic and enterprise development. Next. Now, we like to think of Singapore as a global Asian node. In particular, we want to see ourselves as a global Asian node for technology, for innovation and for enterprise. I will not go through each of our accolades, uh, but these are international rankings and uh, reports about Singapore. I'm sure uh, you know, you already know a lot about this. That's why you are here today. <laughs> Next. Let me share a little bit with you on what are some of the innovation that's happening in Singapore. Next. Now, looking at our startup ecosystem, this is a quick snapshot, okay? Uh, to date, uh, we have more than 180 accelerators and incubators, and I think we are seeing more every day uh, because of the growth of Asia and the rapid pace of innovation happening in Asia. Uh, we have about 4,000 uh, technology startups. Uh, if you add on the non-tech startups, uh, I think the numbers will be several thousands more. So actually there's quite a, a lot of startups in Singapore today. I think we have about uh, more than 150 venture capital investors. Uh, we have done about 13.4 billion worth of deals, about 500 of them for the first three quarters of last year. So I think uh, we are emerging, really emerging to be a key innovation hub in Asia. And backed up by our 30 Institute of Higher Learnings and Research Institutes, there are many innovation and technology commercialization that's happening in Singapore today. So this is a quick snapshot of our startup and innovation ecosystem. Next. 
I think we are looking at um, a lot of deep, deep tech interest today happening in our research institute and the private sector. Uh, I'm not going to go through each of them, uh, but suffice to say, uh, we are seeing more spin-offs. Uh, we are seeing a lot of corporates uh, looking at deep tech. Uh, and, and we are seeing a lot of uh, startups, accelerators, innovation intermediaries uh, doing many things in Singapore. And later, I will show you what are some of the things that we are doing. Next. Now, uh, in Enterprise Singapore, in order to develop and entrench the innovation ecosystem in Singapore, uh, we have started uh, this program known as Global Innovation Alliance. I think the key is uh, we want to look at supporting more startups and talent to come in and go out of Singapore. So to date, uh, we have set up a network uh, spreading from all the way from the Americas to Asia and to Europe. And you can see, we actually have a partner in Sao Paulo today in Brazil. So uh, we are very interested uh, to see how we can increase our collaboration uh, with Brazilian startups and corporates. Okay, next. Now, in the transport and logistics sector in particular, uh, we are seeing a lot of innovation and technology developments. And this is primarily because we are building several world-class infrastructure in Singapore today. So uh, we are in the process of building our Terminal 5, our airport Terminal 5, uh, which is going to have a capacity of close to 100 million passengers per year, throughput. And uh, this whole development will take up to roughly 10 years to complete. And we are going to build one of the most advanced, most innovative, and most sustainable airport uh, in Asia. So there will be many opportunities for innovation. In fact, we are now actively uh, working with the, uh, the Changi Airport Group uh, to see how we can really uh, attract more innovation activities within the airport itself. And the airport has actually launched an uh, innovation uh, area uh, within the airport uh, where startups and corporates can come together and work jointly uh, on airport and aviation related projects. We are now actively uh, working with the, Singapore, uh, the Changi Airport group uh, to see how we can really uh, attract more innovation activities within the airport itself. The next project, uh, a mega project that we are building up is the Tuas Megaport. Uh, this is going to be uh, one of the largest port uh, uh, in Asia, one of the largest in Asia. Uh, it's going to open maybe end of next, by end of next year, but it will be again a 10 year project, 10 years project. Uh, when it's finished, it will be the largest fully automated terminal in the world. So we are going to aggregate all our current existing terminals into that particular location in Tuas. Uh, I'm sure uh, those of you who have been here in Singapore last year uh, we have, may have visited uh, the work site, uh, but there's nothing much to see yet uh, because it's not operational yet. Uh, but we are very uh, interested uh, to see how we can have more innovation in the Tuas port area, such as uh, driverless vehicles, automated cranes, you know, uh, backed up by a very sophisticated uh, digital uh, network, which will link up not just port, but shipping lines, container trucks, depots, logistics companies, warehouses. So this is the future plan of the Tuas port. Now at the land transport area, uh, we are piloting uh, autonomous vehicle now. Uh, in particular, we are very interested uh, to have AV buses, uh, driverless buses uh, to be deployed in Singapore uh, in the next couple of years. Uh, now we are all at trial uh, basis. So we have set aside several innovation sandbox 
uh, for the trial to happen. Uh, so different autonomous vehicle companies are now testing different variants in Singapore. So from buses uh, to cars and so on. And of course, we have put in a commitment uh, to say that uh, we will eventually phase out uh, comb internal combustion engine. Uh, we will move towards uh, zero emission uh, vehicles uh, in the long term. Uh, and this include electric vehicle. And we are now very interested to also trial hydrogen vehicles. So uh, last week, we just had a webinar on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And uh, it was uh, actually very much welcomed by the industry. And we hope to start uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicle trials in Singapore by the end of next year. Uh, in the logistics space, uh, we are looking at uh, several uh, new projects as well. We are looking at automated, uh, fully automated warehouses, uh, fully automated container depots, and so on. Uh, and this will also be backed up by uh, what we call the digital supply chain systems and networks uh, that will not just link up to Singapore, uh, but eventually link up globally as well to other hubs and other corporates and other logistics companies. So uh, it is taking shape, uh, but I think it will take some time before it's, it will be fully materialized. So um, at the air, land, sea, and logistics space, we see tremendous opportunities for partnerships and collaboration in innovation. Uh, lessons learned in Singapore can be shared with our Brazilian friends. Uh, we also welcome Brazilian companies and startups uh, to come to Singapore uh, to work with us to pilot, to trial new solutions. So these are already existing platforms that we can do a lot more innovation. Next. Now, for Enterprise Singapore, we are very much uh, involved. Uh, we, later, you will hear from Port XL, uh, which is an international uh, marine time focus accelerator. Uh, they have set up in Singapore, uh, partnering Enterprise Singapore to see how uh, we can grow greater marine time innovation in Asia. Uh, at the same time, uh, we are also attracting global companies like Techstars, uh, to set up a uh, new marine time focus accelerator such as the Eastern Pacific Accelerator in Singapore. Uh, and I I'm very happy to share with you uh, that uh, last week, Enterprise Singapore's venture capital arm, Seeds Capital, have launched a 50 million marine time core innovation and investment fund together with six uh, global investment partners uh, from Asia and from Europe uh, together, uh, we will use this 50 million to seed about 50 startups uh, focusing on marine time and supply chain. Uh, at the same time, Enterprise Singapore works closely with our Institute of Higher Learnings, such as the Center of Marine Time Studies. Uh, I myself have just been appointed as a board member of the Center of Marine Time Studies, uh, where I hope to bring uh, ESG uh, into many more tripartite collaboration to drive uh, research and development, uh, education and training, as well as industry projects uh, with our marine time companies and startups. Yeah, next. I mentioned about PSA. Uh, we are also a key innovation partner together with PSA to look at developing the next generation uh, port ecosystems. Uh, so we want to leverage on uh, PSA long-term port development plans, especially uh, in Tuas Port, to look at how we can do more uh, tech-related projects. So for example, uh, we are working with them uh, on the Container Port 4.0 initiative, uh, where we hope to have more uh, data integration between port and port users that like I mentioned the trucks, the ships, the container depots. So we want, to, we want to set up a fully digital network between all the port ecosystem. And this will be backed by artificial intelligence and advanced data analytics. Uh, at our next uh, port ecosystem player, Jurong Port, which is a bulk port operator, uh, we are working with them uh, to, to enable digital 
uh, transactions uh, to optimize the overall supply chain and productivity. So for, for, for example, at the Stevedore, uh, we are going to move into full digital reporting and management rather than uh, the traditional, very manual and pen and paper based approach. Uh, at the same time, we are going to work on ship supplies and chandering uh, to see how uh, we can also digitize the whole process uh, to reduce waiting time, to increase productivity and quick turnaround uh, for shipping lines and ship operators. Yeah, next. So I mentioned about the Maritime Co-Investment Fund. Uh, we are looking to seed more Singapore-based early stage and deep tech startups uh, with the potential to scale globally. Uh, this will be private-led co-investment. Uh, so seeds capital, our venture capital arm, will work with uh, our six uh, co-investment partners. I think many of you could be familiar with them. Uh, we have uh, from Hamburg, we have Inoport. Uh, from Copenhagen, we have Rainmaking. Uh, from Hamburg, again, we have Tech Peer. Or is it Berlin? Sorry. Uh, from uh, Berlin. And then we have uh, PSA Unbox uh, from Singapore. Uh, KSL, which is a member of the Quark Group, as well as Ship Focus. Uh, these are all from Singapore. So uh, I think with this 550 million fund, uh, we hope to really catalyze more investments uh, for our promising marine time startups. Yeah, next. So uh, let me share you some of the upcoming initiatives. There are many, but I'll just give you a few examples of what we can do together. Uh, last year, we had a very successful switch in uh, 2019. Uh, I understand that more than 10,000 uh, companies or participants came uh, for the event. Uh, it is what we call the Singapore Week of Innovation and Technology. Uh, in short, switch. Uh, this is one of the largest uh, global innovation events in the world today. So this year, uh, I think we are going to do a fully digital version. And we welcome our Brazilian friends uh, to participate. Uh, you can get more information from us uh, after this. Uh, I'm sure Joel uh, will, will, and, and Josiah and Francisco will share more with you on this as well. Next. Now, next month, uh, Enterprise Singapore will launch our second edition of the Trade and Connectivity Challenge 2020. Uh, we are going to have eight problem statement areas ranging from IoT, Big Data, blockchain, robotics, AVs, resource sharing, uh, process enhancement, all the way to sustainability. Uh, we have already secured more than 10 corporate partners uh, to be on board. Uh, we are looking at curating more than 20 problem statements. And uh, we are going to have three cash prizes plus all the participating corporates have, have committed to trial the selected solutions. So this is not just a normal competition or challenge, but it will come uh, with actual trials and pilots and projects for the startups. Okay, so this is something very interesting and we really hope that our Brazilian friends uh, can participate in this. We are going to launch it uh, end July. Uh, we will send you more information and the challenge uh, will be closed in about one month's time. Yeah. So we really hope that you can take this opportunity to participate. Next. I think uh, that will come to the end of my presentation. Uh, happy to have uh, more interaction. Uh, my team is here with me. Uh, so they will be able to contribute to the discussion as well. So thank you very much. And I really look forward uh, to seeing all of you either in Singapore or in Brazil. Thank you very much. É, muito obrigado, Mr. Law, pela excelente explicação, bastante didática. Uh, não sei como o seu aeroporto pode ser mais moderno do que ele já é, mas vamos aguardar para ver. Aquilo ali é um, realmente uma atração turística da cidade. Uh, eu queria só complementar, se o senhor puder é, explicar para nós, como a gente falando do conceito de inovação aberta aquela inovação onde a comunidade é convidada para inovar algum problema de uma entidade específica. 
Como lá em Singapura, a, o Unboxed da PSA faz com que os problemas reais do porto cheguem a esse ecossistema envolvendo, inclusive, o PIA 71. Yes, a very good question. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think today uh, we are still learning about open innovation. Uh, we have made quite good progress, but I think there's more to go and we are learning every day uh, on how uh, open innovation can be and the impact as well as the influence it has. Now, in the case of, for example, uh, PSA Unbox, uh, I'm not from PSA Unbox, so I'll try my best to share with you what we understand about how uh, they do their innovation. I think one of the important thing is PSA Unbox is a top-down initiative of PSA. Now, what do I mean by top-down? It means the board of PSA and the top management of PSA and the CEO of PSA decided to set up PSA Unbox. And the mission of PSA Unbox is actually to help PSA to source for global innovation and technology that PSA does not want to develop in-house. So it has to work very closely with the PSA operational and business units to understand their problems, present and future, and then craft it into a problem statement that we can bring for open innovation. And this is not an easy thing to do. It is very difficult. Uh, we, sometimes we all know what is the problem, but when we want to craft it into problem statements areas, it is not easy at all. It is something that takes quite a bit of effort. And af only after a number of time of doing it and experience, you can do it well. And so I feel that uh, PSA Unbox are uh, having been uh, just established for less than five years. Uh, they have done okay. Uh, we work with them. Uh, we, they are willing to do more and they are always looking to improve themselves. And I'm sure they are very happy uh, to work with our Brazilian friends. Yeah, thank you. Muito obrigado pela resposta. Uh, eu fui especificamente neste ponto porque eu represento um, uma associação de empresas portuárias brasileiras. É, aqui no Brasil, nossos portos têm muitas empresas competindo entre si, diferente da PSA, que é a única empresa no porto de Singapura. Então, nesse ecossistema, a minha entidade pretende fazer algo parecido como o Unbox. A gente pretende ouvir as necessidades dos nossos associados e encaminhar estes problemas já tabulados e formatados para entidades que possam promover a inovação aberta. Então, por isso que a gente está tentando construir este processo. Temos ciência que não, não desenvolveremos propriamente as soluções e que o processo de inovação ele tem vários atores complementares. Então, a gente quer ocupar este espaço dando apoio às associadas e ao setor privado brasileiro. Joel, eu queria passar para você eventualmente você tem algum ponto para complementar ou para você conhece aqui a, 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 o nosso processo, a nossa realidade e ajudar aí o Mr. Law com alguma colocação adicional, por favor. <risos> I'll, I'll keep it to English and I think there'll be translation, right? Uh, from that. So, again, thank, thank you so much uh, to me uh, uh, for sharing a little bit of what we do. And uh, I just want to do a quick uh, thank you to everyone that joined, uh, not only this webinar, but who are able to go to Singapore and see a little bit what uh, we did over there. We see a lot of uh, port friends over here. And I think uh, what we want to do more is cooperation, right? It comes uh, and must be always a two-way a two uh, conversation. Uh, so what we do as Enterprise Singapore is, of course, to help bring uh, Singaporean solutions to the world. So we want to bring some of to Brazil and also uh, to allow Brazilian solutions in this case to go to Singapore. Uh, in this case, I think one example uh, of what we what we have done is actually Port Excel, right? Which was not necessarily Singaporean start, but is becoming Singaporean in many ways. So how do we show 
uh, that Singaporean companies or international companies actually can go to Singapore and can uh, benefit from the, the environment over there. So I think on that we have a, a part Excel maybe to share some words with us as well on that topic. Valentin? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Joel. Um, thank you, uh, Angelino, and, and also thank you, CM, for introducing us initially. Um, I'll share my screen and presentation. Here we go. Um, so yeah, as, as Joe mentioned, we're, we're initially a European initiative, um, a platform to boost and, and drive innovation across the maritime industry. And uh, specifically for that, we work with, with governments, um, initially in Rotterdam with the, with, the Port of Singapore, with the Port of Rotterdam, sorry, in 2015. And then with time, we've looked at expanding in, in other um, areas of the world. And one of them was Singapore. And we were, we were able to count on the support of Enterprise Singapore to help us set up there and set up the program. Um, and really the objective of, of Port Excel is um, creating a discussion, but also solving, solving problem statements. We're creating a discussion about innovation in the maritime logistics, energy, and chemical industries. And um, for that, we've, we have an international team, uh, initially a team in Rotterdam who set it up, uh, Carrie and Seth Willem, who are all from the maritime background uh, experts in the field, they worked for the ports or for large corporates in the field. And then in the markets, we have people who run the programs who are more business oriented. Uh, and for example, in Singapore, uh, Oscar and I have been doing that for the this current cohort, um, at least. Um, what we focus on is really this, these four industries. So ports, uh, which is in general, you know, whatever, what, what PSA is doing, for example, in Singapore, uh, what Port of Rotterdam is doing in Rotterdam, uh, shipping and logistics, energy and chemicals. And we look at all technologies that could uh, turn around these industries. So um, whatever is there in their value chain uh, is interesting for us. And, and key pillars um, are things like sustainability. How can we turn, for example, the, the oil and gas industry, um, their processes a bit cleaner, greener, greener uh, more sustainable, um, because they're all making efforts in that direction. And sometimes there's the supply of technology has not arrived yet. Uh, so what we try to do is really help this technology maybe move from another industry to come to the maritime industry or be created and be made uh, available to this industry. Um, yeah, there are major trends in, in the maritime industry, but the, the most important thing is, I guess, for you, it's more interesting what we do. Uh, so we try to support or we support to the best of our abilities, startups and scale ups. Uh, so early stage companies and a little bit more mature companies. Um, in Singapore, we have mostly startup companies, so companies that have existed for less than a year um, that are looking really to drive up their businesses. But we also have some companies who are established, for example, in Europe or in other parts of the world that are looking to enter the Asian markets and therefore look at Singapore as a perfect place to set up. Um, and we really try to help them through a variety of ways, uh, but mostly through four pillars that we are like skills, network, um, opportunities and capital. So skills can be anything from a, a workshop to a specific one-on-one -on -one consultation on a specific topic. So they want to you know, improve their branding or marketing and we can connect them with someone who uh, is an expert in that field. Um, and it can go, network is any networking events that we, that we organize, um, things like we're doing today. So uh, a webinar is where we really, have, anyone can share, ask, ask questions, get to know each other. Sometimes even between the startups, they have a lot of synergies. Um, and they, re they realize that through programs like Port Excel. Um, in terms of opportunities, it's mostly working with corporates. So it's pilots, uh, customers, uh, can also be joint innovations. There are many, many um, attractive programs set up by the government of Singapore and Enterprise Singapore, where there is a need for different players. Uh, so maybe one uh, 3D printer uh, with um, ship owner, with um, manufacturer, and they all work together um, and they get to meet each other on through a platform like Excel and work together on programs uh, and calls of action from, uh, from government initiatives. And the last part is capital. So capital can be anything from direct investments, uh, investors, but also grants and uh, general support from, from the ecosystem. Um, what we've been doing so far, so we were able to, to incubate about 100 companies uh, over the world. Uh, mostly in Europe and in Singapore, now we're about 25. Um, we are very happy of the results. We've been able to run quite many pro uh, pilot projects that turn to customers. Uh, we have a number of successful companies as well. 
um, just in Singapore, maybe I'll take some examples of the Singapore uh, companies. We have companies such as Performance Routers, a confined space drone inspection company that has recently raised their Series A um, and has one of their investors is one of the largest oil and gas players in the world um, that they met through the program um, in Singapore. Or Cargo AI is another example that uh, recently got acquired by another cargo player um, or, sh or forwarder actually uh, that they also met through uh, Port Excel. And um, other companies, maybe uh, something a bit different, P-Fiber is uh, more focused on a sustainable part. So they make packaging, a sustainable packaging, uh, biodegradable packaging. And uh, they recently signed a large partnership with Maersk International to help them with their brand new initiative on um, making their, their entire value chain uh, more sustainable. The way we do this, as I mentioned, it's a program, acceleration program, incubation program, depending on your stage. Um, we have different programs across the world, depending on the needs and a little bit the, the characteristics of the markets. Um, in Rotterdam, we have a three months uh, intense program where really cohort oriented. So everyone's together. Uh, you have to be there almost every day. Um, intense workshops. Uh, well, apparently my slides are not scrolling. Can you see my slides? Yeah, just... uh, Valentin, we, we yeah. are only seeing the first page. Uh -huh. So you got to scroll, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, let me see how I can do that. Mm. Let me, okay, you should see my screen again, correct? Yes, fantastic. Okay. Finally, we are seeing everything beautiful. Sorry, so maybe I can just, I quickly go over the slides again. Uh, so, I mean, the, as long as you listen, that's perfectly fine, should be all right. But, uh, uh, so you can also see a little bit uh, of the rest. Um, good. So a little bit of the names of the companies, I think hopefully good, perfect. Um, so the pro on the program side, as I was, as I was saying, um, in Singapore, we'll, we'll have a long -term, longer term program, a year, one year program, uh, more hands off. So we look at really having the, the entrepreneur decide to what extent they wanna uh, participate and take the value of the program. Um, we give them more freedom. We, wanna, we, we don't wanna hold their hand every day. It's a slightly different approach. Uh, but it's a year long, so we can really follow the, the development of the company. And this year, uh, it has been fully online, uh, fully digital. So we've been hosting webinars every week. And as soon as it will be possible, we'll be hopefully having networking, physical networking events again. And demo days and actually one of our first uh, virtual demo days arriving in three days on Thursday. We'll be presenting some of the companies. Um, happy to share the, the link at the end of this call for anyone who's interested in joining and seeing a little bit of what's happening in the Singapore program um, and the way we 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 help them create value and uh, help the companies grow and help the entrepreneurs in their daily life as well uh, is really through the the, the ecosystem um, and we're we like working with other players with specialists experts in their fields um, and I apologize to Jinglin and Sienna for the mistake in Singapore enterprise Singapore but we, we, we work with, um, so in this case, for example, in Singapore, we work with the government of Singapore, Enterprise Singapore on different levels. Uh, so one, they really support the program, um, also by helping us identify companies, um, by having set up regulations in general, the government of Singapore, setting up regulations for innovation uh, that are very favor favorable. Um, they have grant schemes, uh, entrepreneur support. And right now in COVID, they had lots of initi many initiatives to support the companies in general. Um, that help you know, attract great founders and great companies to Singapore. We also work with, with institutes of higher learnings, uh, universities, uh, be it Singaporean, with, uh, we, we work quite closely with NUS and the Maritime Center, but we also work with international schools. So we work with the University of St. Gallen in Switzerland on more of a business side where some of our participants can have access to um, a business case class or 
um, certain they're invited to certain events where they can meet students. Uh, so poten potential source of talents as well. Um, we also work very closely with corporates, as I mentioned. Um, Rena is one of them, uh, one of the largest certification players in the world. We also work with non-maritime players such as EY um, and smaller players that can also give you access to things as straightforward as accounting services, uh, CFO for hire when you're looking maybe uh, uh, in the transition or even help you hire people. Uh, we also work with some, some headhunting firms. Um, now also in Singapore and in general over the world, but in Singapore it's very, very attractive because there are plenty of other accelerators and it's a great field for innovation. We work with other accelerators, we work with other, other startups. Uh, we believe strongly in the fact that entrepreneurs go through similar paths that they should share with each other, should learn from each other. Um, and there's plenty of opportunities for be it just collaboration um, or being customers of each other, of using each other's technology, uh, but also potential acquisitions in the future. And then finally, we also uh, work with other investors simply to provide uh, capital for growth of companies. We focus on, on mostly early stage companies and uh, other investors will focus maybe on, on later stage companies uh, or they have they provide a different kind of value uh, where they're probably maybe experts in the field or they have other companies in similar fields or they can connect you to a specific customer. Um, and that's a little bit what we do. And, and this is one of the reasons Singapore is very attractive to Port Excel. Uh, it has all of this ecosystem, a very well-functioning ecosystem, an approachable ecosystem, and uh, um, very well-oriented uh, towards building companies. And we play, Port Excel plays, uh, is becoming the platform to connect all of these worlds. Uh, and I think it was very well reflected in, in CM Law's uh, slide on, we could see that how many uh, accelerator programs existed, how many investors are there, who is there also, because you can see that some of the major international investors are in Singapore um, and are looking to invest in Singapore to build really the, the Southeast Asia um, environment ecosystem and through the hub of Singapore. Um, and beyond all of that, you'll simply the infrastructures in Singapore, uh, be it the port, the airport, um, even just the living standards of Singapore are very, very attractive for any entrepreneur. Um, and Singapore is, is one of the locations. Um, as you can see, it's slightly different than the rest. So it's supported by Port Excel, but it's run by a different company. Uh, but we have currently four locations in total. The main one, the initial one, Rotterdam. Uh, we have one in Antwerp that has also been uh, in activity since 2018. And we have Taranto now in Italy that has been um, active since uh, 20, end of 2019. Uh, so it's just started. And Port Excel Singapore started in 2018 initially and is currently going through its second program. Um, now, maybe how this might be very interesting for you, maybe how you can get, uh, get into the program and join us. And uh, uh, you can always contact us. So feel free to reach out to us if you want to know, get more information on what we've been doing so far, uh, how you can join the program in general, what we've, if you want specific information on the webinars, um, we're happy to share that with you and, and have a chat. And we select companies uh, based on program statements from corporates to also link back to Angelino's uh, question. Uh, but we also sometimes identify some certain uh, technologies that have not been identified as a program statement, but can maybe simply um, add a layer to uh, what is already happening today, or that has been very successful in a specific industry and can be applied in the maritime sector. Uh, so you can contact us anytime. And you can also reach us reach us on our websites. Um, you can also wait for the uh, applications to open for the next cohort, uh, which should happen uh, end of the year. So you have some time to, to prepare for it. Um, yeah, I think that covers everything on, on my side. Happy to answer any question that you might have mm -hmm. on the program, on one? us, on other startups that we work with, um, on our general efforts across the world. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Obrigado, Valentim, pela apresentação. Ah, da nossa parte, ah, para Mr. Law e o próprio Valentim, Joel, eh, a gente está declarando que estamos aproveitando este evento, que é o Brasil Export, o maior evento institucional do setor logístico portuário do Brasil, para testarmos a nossa capacidade de implementar aqui no Brasil um processo de inovação sistematizado como esse que nós que nos inspira, que é esse de Singapura. 
No momento, nós estamos com, estamos com quatro atores principais envolvidos, o apoio institucional do próprio Ministério da Infraestrutura, na figura do secretário Marcelo Sampaio. Ah, o Fabrício, com o Brasil Export, tem se apresentado como grande maestro agora, tentando organizar essas partes, com apoio técnico da, da minha associação, que é a Abitra. A gente pretende ocupar um espaço similar ao que o Unbox faz, é, formatando os problemas, que parece a parte técnica mais, mais difícil. E temos a parceria da 013 Innovation, que é uma parceira de organização dos eventos e dos hackathons e das maratonas, que está apoiando a gente, está até presente aqui na sala o Marco Ribeiro, que dá esse apoio para a gente. Então, a gente, neste primeiro momento, é, faremos algumas experiências dentro do próprio processo com seis maratonas de tecnologia de inovação, cinco pequenas no nível de ideatons e uma com um hackathon em Brasília e esperamos ter resultados palpáveis em cima de problemas da vida real do setor portuário. A nossa tarefa no momento é, junto com os parceiros que estão nessas diversas telas, localizarmos problemas que sejam problemas importantes que, que reduzam a eficiência atualmente do setor portuário e que possam virar excelentes negócios para as empresas que vão é, desenvolver essas soluções ou essas propostas, esses protótipos. Nessa linha, a Mr. Law, é, temos aqui duas perguntas, ah, uma do Mário Covia, que é, um, que é um grande ator do nosso setor portuário, ele pergunta se o senhor tem algum conselho de como implantar essa, essa, esse ecossistema de startups dentro dos portos, se existe alguma receita, alguma melhor prática de como fazer isso ser instalado dentro dos portos para que facilite esse processo. Okay, um, I will try to take a step at this. Thank you for the question. Uh, I think what we have seen so far in Singapore, uh, first of all, uh, we need to get top management and leadership fullest commitment and support to really drive innovation. Okay, uh, why? Because innovation takes time. It is not like buying a solution off the shelf or just procuring from a vendor. It takes commitment of the corporate and the business units to really work with the startups to really do the whole innovation thing. So it costs time, it costs people, and, and, you, and you really need to put in a lot of effort. So first thing, top leadership and management support must be there. Two, uh, let's not have any innovation part-timers. Uh, you need to have a full-time dedicated team. No matter how big or how small, you need to have a full-time team to look at this. Uh, people who can just dream, eat, sleep, thinking about innovation and must be passionate about it. All right? Uh, if you are going to have, if I am a, like a, a business unit and you ask me to do it part-time or double time, it won't work. It won't work. I think we need to have full-time people. So you need to have a unit set up, okay, to do this. That's the second thing. The third thing is uh, please ensure that you also set up uh, funding, money for innovation. Um, because not all innovation may result in something good and useful. The trials may fail, the experiments may not work out, and then it is gone. So you need to set aside a certain budget, okay, innovation budget to really try some of these things. Four, uh, you need to ensure that uh, you work with partners, uh, local partners in Brazil, international partners like i think um for abdra you are working with zero three so i think you need to look at some uh innovation intermediaries uh innovation agents who can help you because framing the problems into a problem statement like i mentioned earlier is not so easy so i think you need help so let's not be shy and the last uh but not least 
uh, the most important thing is really to establish global partnership. Uh, so if Mario is very interested to do this, uh, Singapore is interested to see how we can work with you. I think uh, the innovation system must be an open system. It must not uh, have any barriers. Uh, it must allow for both local and foreign startups and partners to come in easily. So uh, that is my simple uh, response to your question. Thank you, Mario. Sorry, just to point out here, Joel here. É, Antes de passar é, uma pergunta. Janine, só, só para avisar para o né, pra, pra, pra lado ah, do mim, que o Mário é o. Vou perguntar para o Joel. É... Oi, Joel. A gente viu Não. que tem um ponto de contato desse ecossistema em São Paulo. Se as nossas startups brasileiras quiserem se aproximar desse ecossistema, começar a efetivamente a tentar entender as necessidades do setor portuário, do setor logístico, qual é o caminho? para que a gente consiga fazer é, essa coisa funcionar e ter mais inovação a serviço do nosso setor que é tão carente. Perfeito. Obrigado aí, é, Angelino. É, acho que o ponto somos nós, né, da Enterprise Singapore. É, eu acho que o nosso diretor Tchumim citou um pouco do, do, dos investimentos que é necessário. Lá no começo da apresentação ele falou do CIDS. O CIDS é um venture capital dentro da Enterprise Singapore, né, que ele citou aí, que temos aproximadamente 50 milhões né, de dólares para utilizar em 50, em 50 startups. Tá? É, então, esse é um pouquinho do que a gente já está fazendo, esse é um movimento. É, naturalmente, todas as empresas brasileiras né, com interesse podem vir conversar conosco é, e, vir, e, e ver como a gente pode avançar com isso. Eu acho que essa é um pouquinho da nossa função, a ideia, como eu falei desde o começo, é sempre dupla, né? Então, é tanto levar, tanto trazer empresas singapurianas para cá, nesse sentido de startups, é, que possam trabalhar é, para os problemas, para os desafios que estão sendo feitos aqui, quanto ao contrário também, né? Aproveitar toda essa criatividade brasileira que a gente sabe que existe aí, dos mais diversos portos por todo o Brasil, e levar um pouco dessas soluções, né? Dessa criatividade para a Singapura. E aí, então, naturalmente, poder utilizar um pouco do, do, dos fundos e, e de todo esse networking que Singapura proporciona, tá? E eu, eu deixo meu e-mail aqui também no final, nós estamos escritório em São Paulo, estamos de home office agora, né, por, por razões óbvias, é, mas estamos sempre operantes. É, cito também a, os nossos diretores aqui, Josiah Choi, Francisco Rios, que está no México, é, todos aqui na América Latina trabalhando por esse ambiente de inovação, tá? Tá? É, então acho que isso é importante e só traduzindo um pouquinho é, para o lado do Chun Min que o, 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 o Povi que não fez a pergunta seria o equivalente é, he's the head of a MPA in Brazil so for open to cooperation that's great só para traduzir um pouquinho o que é o título um pouquinho do que a Antac está fazendo é, e como que a gente pode trabalhar juntos no âmbito federal e naturalmente com as startups aqui e até, Angelino, se você quiser falar um pouquinho do, dos desafios que estão sendo feitos do Hacking Sport e ver como a gente pode pensar em, em possíveis aí cooperações, prêmios e participações de Singapura, acho que esse é o um momento para trazer para o Tio Minho também. Certo. É, a gente separou o país em regiões e vamos fazer... É, é, tentar trazer alguns problemas dentro de temas. Então, uma região vai cuidar do tema ferrovia, o outro rodovia, o outro corredores logísticos, a, é, cabotagem, e no grande hackathon a gente vai fazer alguma coisa como virtualização da cadeia logística. Então, esses são os grandes temas, mas os problemas em si, que é a parte mais difícil, como já disse o Mr. Law, é o nosso esforço no momento é tentar arranjar situações que tenham bases de dados, sensor, sensores, georreferenciamento, possibilidade de automação, então, a gente está contando com a colaboração desse time que está na tela para trazer isso, porque queremos uma coisa que seja prática. Né? É, brevemente, estaremos anunciando quais são os problemas reais que vão ser enfrentados dentro de uma plataforma que a 013 colocou no ar, no site do, do, do Brasil Hack Export, mas as inscrições para os times de inovação já estão abertas. É, e a gente está correndo contra o tempo aí para poder fazer isso da melhor forma possível, né? Ah, tem uma pergunta para o Mr. Ló, do Flávio Costa da Eldorado, que é um problema brasileiro, não sei se se repete em Singapura. A partir do momento que é anunciada a intenção de se fazer 100% de automação nos terminais portuários, como isso vem sendo tratado com os sindicatos 
dos trabalhadores portuários da região. É, poderia falar se isso tem algum efeito lá, algum impacto? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, actually, I think our situation in Singapore could be slightly different. Uh, we are actually short of manpower. <laughs> yeah, so it is very hard uh, to find uh, people willing to work uh, in the front lines of the port operation. Uh, for example, operating the cranes, uh, driving the, the trucks, and so on. So I think for us, uh, we have no choice, no choice at all. Uh, because of the, the, uh, the manpower shortage, uh, we have no choice but to go for um, you know, uh, full automation. I, I give you an example. Uh, in our logistics sector today, um, how old do you think are the average um, truck drivers? How old do you think they are? Make a guess. 50? 40? 30? The average age is 50 years old. <laughs> so, and how long can they work? before uh, we need to find uh, young, uh, the next generation take over. I think the trouble and the difficulty now is that it's not easy to find. So we have a, we have a problem in Singapore about manpower. So I would say that uh, we are going full automation because uh, we really cannot find enough manpower to do it. So it's a very different situation, I think, uh, from Brazil. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Fabrício, a gente está chegando perto do final, é, mas tem mais uma per última pergunta aqui, se você permitir, eu posso fazer? É do, do Bob, do Marcos Ribeiro, da 013, e pode ser para o Valentim. É, ele quer saber como essa ferramenta do Hackathon né, ajuda a, a acelerar esse processo de inovação, tanto no âmbito da Porsche XL, né, como lá hum. da, da Singapura. Sim. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I think a hackathon is a great way to, to get started on, on, on issues and problem statements uh, because it forces people to you know, address it, search everything around it, get to know whatever is happening around it. Um, but it's sometimes a little bit short to go a little bit deeper in the, in the issues. I don't know if you have usually the one day or two days hackathons. Um, but it's a great way to first get started with the problem statements. And even just by going into identifying problem statements. You mentioned earlier that it's sometimes hard for... It's hard to, you don't know what you don't know. It's always the issue. Uh, so how can you, when you ask people that are outside of the maritime world or even inside the maritime world, what from their perspective is the issue? And in a hackathon, that's very, you know, you can drive it very quickly. Everyone will be thinking about the same thing, discussing about it, talking about it, uh, looking for it online, um, I don't know, even calling customer, whatever. They'll find one problem statements, two solutions. And you'll get an array of solutions very quickly that you're able to explore the ones you highly, you, you mostly believe in. Um, so I think for that, a hackathon is a great tool. For, in general, the maritime sector, I think it's, you know, it's, it's long cycles. Um, so hackathon might be a little bit too short um, and maybe weekly, a week long event, event or similar to what, what we've, we've been, been trying to do with acceleration programs um, or just in general innovation programs uh, help, help make it a reality. Um, yeah. Does that answer your question, hopefully? Respondeu sim, obrigado. Por isso que nessa experiência que nós estamos fazendo agora, o nosso Hackathon de Brasília terá 11 dias para dar tempo de da, da questão ser bastante aprofundada e pretendemos também declarar o problema pelo menos um mês antes e já botar as bases de dados à disposição das equipes. Vai ser um teste mas estamos bastante confiantes no resultado, nessa linha de que a gente quer dar um passo de cada vez. Fabrício, da minha parte, estou mais que satisfeito. Queria agradecer demais ao Joel por ter facilitado esse, esse encontro com a gente. Agradecer o Mr. Ló, que foi brilhante. Trouxe aqui a experiência deles, como a gente viu lá. É, o Valentim também, com a experiência deles. É, torcendo para que a gente viabilize para as equipes que vencerem o Hackathon uma semana lá em Singapura para ver de perto isso tudo funcionando. Estamos trabalhando nisso ainda e vou devolver para você a coordenação aí, Fabrício, agradecendo pela confiança 
de ter colocado eu e arbitrar à frente desse processo.